good morning children how are you i hope you are enjoying these online classes and staying safe and healthy at your home in the last class we studied about uniform and non uniform motion i hope you understood those topics if any doubt you have to try to clear your doubt otherwise you may have problem in next topics in the last class we studied that we can determine the speed of an object if we can measure the time taken by it to cover a certain distance in class 6 you learned how to measure distance but how to measure time let us find out have you ever wondered how our elders could tell the approximate time of the day by just looking at shadows how do we measure time interval of a month or a year our ancestors noticed that many events in nature repeat themselves after definite interval of time for example the sun rises every day in the morning the time between one sunrise and the next is called a day similarly a month was measured from one new moon to the next a year was the time taken by the earth to complete one revolution around the sun but often we need to measure intervals of time which are much shorter than a day for this purpose a number of time measuring devices were invented in ancient times some of them were sundial sand clock water clock but these ancient time measuring devices could not be used for the measurement of small time intervals such as minutes and seconds the measurement of small time intervals became possible when clocks were discovered the working of clocks is rather complex but all of them make use of some periodic motion a motion which repeats itself at regular intervals of time is called periodic motion clocks and watches are the most common time measuring devices used by us and these clocks and watches use the principle of periodic motion and one of the most well known periodic motion is that of a simple pendulum a simple pendulum consists of a small metal ball suspended from a long thread from a rigid support the metallic ball is called the bob of the pendulum the motion of pendulum was first discovered by galileo galileo discovered the important principle of pendulum according to which pendulum completes every oscillation in exactly the same time provided the length of pendulum is kept constant or we can say that time period of pendulum is constant if its length is constant you also can make a simple pendulum by tying about 1 meter long thread to a small metal ball and suspend it from a rigid support you can see in first figure it shows simple pendulum at rest in its main position if the bob of the pendulum is pulled to one side and then released it will begin to oscillate to and fro or back and forth like a swing you can see in second figure initially the bob is at the main position o suppose the bob is pulled a little to the right side to position b and then released it will come back to o and move on to position a at an equal distance on the other side of the main position o and go on repeating this to and fro motion 
between the two extreme positions A and B. And this two end promotion of a simple pendulum is an example of periodic or oscillatory motion. The pendulum is said to have completed one oscillation when its bob starting from its mean position O moves to one extreme position A. Next it goes to other extreme position B and come back to its main position O. The pendulum also completes one oscillation when its bob moves from one extreme position A to other extreme position B and come back to A. Next we will discuss some important terms related with pendulum. First one is length of pendulum. The length of thread from the point of suspension to the center of bob is called length of pendulum. Here point of suspension means the point from where the pendulum is suspended. The time period of pendulum depends on its length. If the length of pendulum is increased, time period will increase. And if length of pendulum is decreased, time period will decrease. Next term is time period. The time taken by pendulum bob to complete one oscillation is called its time period. It is quite short and hence cannot be measured accurately. So to find out time taken for one oscillation we measure the time taken by large number of oscillations. And we can calculate time period by dividing the total time taken by the total number of oscillations. For example, we note down time taken by pendulum, pendulum bob for completing 20 oscillations. And divide this total time by 20. And we can get, get time taken for 1 oscillation. Next term is amplitude. The maximum displacement of the bob from its main position on either side is called the amplitude. In the figure the distance OB and OA shows the amplitude of pendulum. The value of OA and OB are always same. If amplitude is high or low, will it affect the time period? No. Whether the amplitude of oscillation of a pendulum is large or small, the time period remains same. Nowadays, most clocks and watches have an electric circuits with one or more cells. These clocks are called quartz clocks. The time measured by quartz clocks is more accurate than that by the clocks available earlier. So today I conclude here only. Go through videos revised from NCRT books for better understanding of numericals which will be discussed in coming videos. Thank you students.